Number 10. The death of a teenager in India has been captured in one of his friend's pictures, showing him drowning in the background as the group takes a selfie. The 17-year-old boy, named in local media as Vishwash Ji, drowned in a large pond near Bengaluru after he and a group of students decided to go swimming. The group who all attended the National College in Jayanagar had gone swimming in the 10 feet deep water during a college trip. They had taken selfies together while in the water before leaving to visit a temple. Having realized Vishwas was missing around an hour later, the group then scrolled through the pictures they had captured in the day and discovered a selfie from the pond showing the top of his head floating in the background. They contacted the local police who discovered Vishwas' body in the pond. Police said the teenagers had ignored a sign not to enter the water. They disregarded a signboard put up by the local Gram Panchayat that no one should enter the water and plunged in. Vishwas's body was transferred to his family following a post-mortem. Number 9 With the freeway shut down to a man threatening to kill himself on an overpass, a bunch of people in Los Angeles got out of their cars and figured it was a great time to take a group photo. At around 5.30 p.m., Thursday in April 2014, sheriff's deputies responded to a man threatening to jump onto the 105 freeway. Police had to shut down the freeway for more than three hours as negotiations moved forward. Luckily, police convinced the unnamed man to come down without injury, and he was detained. In all of this, however, KTLA captured some of the motorists roaming around the blocked freeway with some taking selfies and group photos, and the rather tasteless group photo, originally posted with the hashtag Jumper. You can see the suicidal man on the fence in the background. Number 8 This photo, taken from a surveillance camera, installed on a lamppost at Utsav Chauk in Kargar, in the Indian city of Mumbai, captured the last moment of a woman. 34-year-old Shilpa Puri was riding a scooter wearing a white helmet, but suddenly her scooter skids and a crane coming from behind her runs over her head. The driver callously gives her a look, but doesn't bother to stop for her help. For 10 minutes, Shilpa lay on the same spot as at least 18 cars, 8 bikers and 5 cars ran past, dodging her body before the police came in and took her body to the hospital. The crane driver has been detained, but police are looking into all formalities before his arrest. Puri used to work at a private firm in Nero and was on her way home when the accident took place. A patch of concrete road, which was recently renovated, was left undone in order to insert a service cable for the ongoing metro construction not far from the area. The concrete road is around 2 to 3 inches above the ground level, and that's where her scooter slipped. Puri left behind her husband, a caterer by profession, and two children. Number 7 Taking selfies wherever we go is such an ingrained part of our lifestyle that we don't even blink twice when we see people taking photos in unlikely places. However, we should still be aware of the dangers in our surroundings before we do so. An Indonesian teen suffered serious injuries to the head when she went along with a group of friends to take a group selfie at the railway in Purwarjo on December 6, 2017. The 16-year-old teen, Eli Hiati, had gone on a stroll along the railway with three other girlfriends and had been snapping photos throughout the way. They stopped by the railway track and one of her friends held a selfie stick to take a group photo. Suddenly, a train rushes past and Hiati, who is right at the back, gets hit by the train's force which causes her to fly forward a few meters. This strong force caused her head to bang against the concrete in front and she suffered heavy bleeding to her head. Her panicked friends rushed for help, and nearby residents came to the rescue by calling for paramedics to the scene. The victim was quickly brought to the hospital and had to undergo emergency surgery to stop the bleeding. Luckily, she managed to survive the incident, and her condition is reportedly stable, although she is still in the ICU. Number 6 A Congolese father sits staring at the severed hand and foot of his five-year-old daughter in 1904. She was killed and allegedly eaten by the members of the Anglo-Belgian India Rubber Company militia. 
Photographer Alice Steely Harris took this of Sala as he sat in grief. His daughter Bali was killed along with his wife because of his failure to meet the rubber collection quota. Number 5 This photo seems normal until you really know the story behind it. Aneka Bodding was filming with her GoPro in the water at Mackenzie Falls in Victoria, Australia when she accidentally filmed the moment a person drowned just behind her. In the background, his friends are frantically trying to rescue him. A 28-year-old Taiwanese man had fallen under the waterfall after slipping off a rock. Bodding's GoPro footage captures the moments after the man had fallen into the water. Bodding said people tried to help, but the water pressure and depth made it difficult and dangerous. The man's body was found the next morning. It's thought that he became trapped under a rock shelf underneath the falls. Number 4 On November 1, 2017, an 18-year-old college student named Audrey Emel Yanikov from Moscow, Russia, got into an argument with his health and basic safety teacher, 44-year-old Sergei Danilov. After the argument, Audrey waited for a break in between classes when no students were present and then confronted his teacher. The teenager flipped out and stabbed the man several times until he was dead. Audrey then took pictures of the dead man's body lying in a pool of blood, along with him smiling and posting the pictures to his VK social media account. Moments later, he committed suicide by taking a circular electric saw that was used in class and sliced his throat. Sergei was found by his colleague teacher, who entered the teacher's office. Then, in several meters, he saw Audrey dead. Sergei leaves behind a wife and three children. According to Audrey's fellow students, there was a lot of conflict between him and Sergei, who was known for being strict. The teacher is allegedly to have recently threatened him to expel him due to more than two weeks of unexplained absence. Number 3 This terrifying image from 2002 shows a group of Chechen villagers looking up from a hole they dug themselves, shortly before it was turned into a burial pit. This horrific occurrence took place following troubles with Chechen rebels. The rebels raided villages in the local area, dragging them off to be tortured or killed. The villagers were forced to dig their own graves. Once they were in the graves dug by themselves, they were blown up with explosives and shot dead, and then buried in the mass graves. Usually, the rebels would try to ransom the villagers to their families, but if they were not cooperative, they were executed in mass graves. This photo, along with the discovery of mass graves with various body parts in them, prove that this atrocity took place. Number 2 The final moments of Travis Alexander's life were nothing short of horrific. He was stabbed multiple times and almost decapitated before being shot and left for dead in his shower. Crime scene photos were shocking, but they were nothing compared to the chilling images found on a digital camera at the scene. Investigators retrieved deleted photos that showed Travis alive in the shower, posing for the camera as water cascaded over him. Then, in a final photo, the water turned red with blood as his killer accidentally took a snapshot of his murderer. In September 2006, 30-year-old Travis Alexander met Jody Arias, 27, at a conference in Las Vegas. The pair began an intense long-distance relationship. Jody was so smitten she joined the Mormon faith, but after just five months, their relationship hit the rocks. Travis told Jody it was just physical and ended it. Jody was devastated and moved to Travis's hometown of Mesa to work as a waitress. Travis told his family that she was stalking him, but he continued to secretly have sex with her. While Jody thought that they were back on track, Travis still refused to commit, and after two years, she moved back to California to live with her grandparents. But it wasn't over. On 4 June 2018, Jody murdered Travis after they had sex one last time and took explicit photos of each other. Five days after the murder, Travis's friends went to his flat and discovered the bloody scene. He was slumped dead in the bottom of his shower, with his throat deeply cut sliced from ear to ear and a gunshot wound to the head. There were 27 stab wounds on the body. The single photo of what is allegedly Jody Aries's foot next to Travis Alexander's body proves that she was guilty. The photo showed the back of Travis's head, with his arm raised and blood trickling down his neck, indicating that the photo was taken after the murder. Number 1 
This photo looks seemingly normal until you realize what's in the background. The very disturbing selfie shows Philippine schoolgirls smiling in a photograph in front of the disabled bus involved in the hostage crisis. The bus was unexpectedly being treated as a tourist site by people. Even police at the scene took photographs as souvenirs, smiles on their faces as if what was behind them was some famous sight. The story began on August 23, 2010. Eight Hong Kong people died after dismissed policeman Rolando Mendoza hijacked a busload of Hong Kong tourists hostage in Manila. In a desperate attempt to be reinstated after losing his job over corrupt allegations, as the drama unfolded live on world television, police officers, instead of taking out the hostage taker by sniper fire, tried to enter the bus by breaking the door and windows with sledgehammers. Negotiations broke down dramatically about 10 hours into the standoff when the police arrested Mendoza's brother and thus incited Mendoza to shoot his hostages with an M16. Following a 90-minute gun battle, Mendoza and eight of the hostages were killed and several others injured. The Philippine and Hong Kong governments conducted several investigations into the incident. Both inquiries concluded that the Philippine officials' poor handling of the situation caused the eight hostages' death.